Now, before we get started, I got to give a huge shout out to the newest Team Keep It Clean channel member, Kevin, and the newest Team Keep It Clean patron, uh, Chris401. If anybody would like to become either one of the two, all that stuff is down below in the description. And if not, hey, let's keep it moving and get right into this episode. First question came from a patron, my guy Serge. He said, this or that? And Graven and Team Keep It Clean, this past Sunday's loss to the Dolphins was a devastating one. Luckily, one of the perks of living in Atlanta is that there is no shortage of football fans that know how it feels. Ooh, <laughs> you ain't lying about that one. And um, the Ravens certainly did their best uh, Atlanta Falcons impersonation uh, this past Sunday against Miami. But anyway, uh, back to this question. My local peeps were very comforting. Fair warning, this might be a long message. Well, hey, fair warning, this may be a long answer. Uh, I have a few takeaways from the Dolphins game. Number one. Marcus Williams looked phenomenal. Even when other defenders were giving up big plays, he wasn't too far from the ball. I can't wait to see how he'll play when we get our defense in order and let him loose. I agree. I agree. 1,000% spot on. Number two, Giro does not deserve a pass. Although he called a good game through 75% of it, he could not get the job done. If I, as a realtor, start a transaction with a client by getting them pre-qualified, getting their offer, offer accepted, completing the inspection, negotiating repairs, and I don't turn in the documents in a timely manner, my clients lose time, money, and the house. Ooh, I appreciate this analogy. I love it. Uh, and in turn, I don't get paid and no one will want to work with me. No one cares how good you start if you can't get the job done. Mm, and that was in all caps for emphasis. And that's true. That's true. No, and a lot of times this, like we've we seen it this past week. And it's like, uh, I know Lamar Jackson, he had a game. That man had a game. Three passing touchdowns, the one rushing touchdown. And it wasn't just any old, oh, QB sneak rushing touchdown. No, 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 no. The 79-yard touchdown run where he didn't even go full speaker. He's sitting there looking back. He was talking about it. He was looking up at the big screen, and he started looking back. And he said the, the speed is different, so it slows you down. But anyway, a, a lot of people, they, they not even necessarily dismissed it, but sort of like overlooked it. It's not getting a lot of credit, and I can understand, because it came in a loss. It came in a loss, so a lot of people, they're not going to be like, oh, man, well, hey, especially with Lamar Jackson. They're not going to be like, oh, man, Lamar had such a great game, but the Ravens lost. No, no they're going to be like the Ravens lost, because that's what it comes down to. Now, uh, well, you know, we over here, we're we not ignoring how great of a game he had. Certainly can't. Um, but the, the Ravens, they, they lost. They lost, so a lot of people... They sort of put it to the side. And, I mean, with, with Tua, Tua threw six, six touchdowns. Yeah, he threw two, but he threw six touchdowns. So, I can understand why a lot of analysts and media and all that are overlooking Lamar's good game. Because, one, Tua threw six touchdowns. Thanks, Ravens defense. But then on top of that, the Ravens, I mean, oof, I wish I could say the Ravens won. The Dolphins, they also won. Um, but, anyway. Now, on to my question. Oh, yeah, Raven. Hey, price still going up. Price still going up because he, he did his part. But anyway, uh, I've seen through social media that the Ravens were trying to make a trade, but it didn't work out. It's clear that we are thin at both cornerback and pass rusher. At cornerback, it would help to have a veteran cornerback that will avoid giving up touchdowns to wide receivers running the same route every play. Uh, and they say the best pass defense is a good pass rush. If you had to pick one. Would you want the Ravens to trade for a pass rusher, knowing we may be saturated later on down the road? Or would you rather trade for a veteran cornerback that would eat into the rookie's playing time? Side note, I wouldn't mind trading for Aaron Jones, but I'm biased because I grew up in El Paso. Much love and thank you for reading my question. So, mm, this is a good one. What's more important uh, to the Ravens' success? Is it the pass rush or the secondary? Um, well, I think that... A lot of times, a lot of people think it's pass rush because they're like, oh, if you got a good pass rush, that just makes life easier for cornerbacks, for safeties, for the secondary as a whole. And it's true. Like, if, if you got a good pass rush as a cornerback, you, you got way less time. Your job is made so much easier, and that's what it should be about, people making other people's jobs easier. But your job is made so much easier because you ain't got to cover people for as long. So if you looking in front of you and you got Tyreek Hill, you could be stressing out. You could be contemplating, man, should I retire at halftime? But if, if you got a good pass rush, you're like, oh, okay, Tyreek Hill, yeah, he fast, but he ain't going to be too fast for too long because I ain't going to have to cover him for too long. So I ain't got to worry about it like that, like that. Still got to worry about it. But 
Having a good pass rush makes life so much easier. Now, on the flip side, uh, great secondary, great coverage. If, if dudes can cover and cover for a longer period of time, that can help the pass rush eventually get there. Because the quarterback going to be holding the ball, holding, waiting, waiting for somebody to come open. But if your secondary can cover, then maybe your pass rush can eventually get there. So, if I had to choose one that was more important to the Ravens' success, really to any team's success, I would say pass rush. I would definitely say pass rush. Because, again, I feel like pass rush makes cornerbacks' job easier than a good secondary makes pass rush jobs easier. Both go hand in hand, but pass rush, I feel like, has a bigger impact. Now, you still want a good secondary. But, again, pass because pass rush, you you getting quarterback hits. You're getting pressure. You're getting sacks. So, sometimes, with a good pass rush, a pass won't even get off. But with a good secondary... Like, you're covering longer, and it's not necessarily even a guarantee, though, that your pass rush makes it home to the quarterback. So, but in the Ravens' particular situation, like you mentioned, he said it could be saturated down the road. And what I think he meant by that is, um, because he sent this question uh, on September 22nd. The date today is the 23rd. So, yesterday, they signed JPP. He sent this at uh, September 22nd at 4.22 p.m., JPP got signed, or it was announced that he got signed around like 3.25, so about 3.30 p.m. So about an hour after JPP got signed, he sent this. Um, so Ravens right now, Adafi away, Justin Houston, Jason Pierre-Paul. Brandon Copeland, he's on a practice squad. Uh, but then with the saturated part, later on they'll be getting back Tyus Bowser uh, after week four. So Around week five, I think he'll be back. May take him a couple, a week or two to get right, really back into it. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, and then maybe it's not a guarantee, but maybe they'll get David Ajabo back this season. Not counting on him. Everything from him in my eyes that you get this year, it's a bonus. I know there's been a lot of back and forth still over the draft pick and whatnot, but anything you get out of uh, David Ajabo this year, it's a bonus. Um, they should get Travis Jones back against the Patriots, so that'll be nice for the uh, the pass rush and the defensive line just as a whole. Um, so in the Ravens situation, I would probably go corner. Now, he did talk about how uh, if you get a corner, because um, it could cut into the rookies playing time, a veteran cornerback. And, yeah, it could, but for me, I'm like, hey, right here, Right now, trying to win. Trying to win a Super Bowl. Not trying to think about, oh, yeah, well, five, ten years down the road. You can think about that later. Let's talk about the right here right now. You trying to make something happen? All right. So I, I would probably, if I had to choose one, I would probably go with cornerback. Um, because you, you got Marlon Humphrey. You got Marcus Peters. You got your safety situation is uh, Marcus Williams has done really good. Kyle Hamilton, he'll come along. You got Chuck Clark. Um, but after Marcus Williams and Marcus, I mean, excuse me, after Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Peters, it's just the rookies. Be, oh, you got Brandon Stevens, too. I forgot about him. You got Brandon Stevens. Uh, you can call up Ardarius Washington. Um, mm, that's a tough one. Because then you think, oh, as far as pass rush, if you get somebody like that, like that, then that can really just give a huge boost to the pass rush. But then you can make Justin Houston. That could allow him to be even fresher coming off the sideline. Uh, Dow Fairway will still be out there, but you get somebody young and somebody that's uh, that's one of them guys. Mm, that's a tough one. That's a tough one because you got JPP, and, and it's not a guarantee that JPP is the he, he's not going to be the JPP of old, and we shouldn't expect that. But um, and Bowser coming back from injury, so we'll see what happens with that. And David Ajabo, you don't know. So you know what? Maybe I'll change my answer to pass rusher. Maybe I, I changed my answer because if you get a nice pass rusher, then you could have him and, and Adafi away, uh, and then you still or depth your depth guys to be Justin Houston and JPP, and then Bows on top of that too. So yeah, I I, th I think I would actually go with pass rusher because they got a, a healthy Marlon Humphrey, a healthy Marcus Peters, uh, Brandon Stevens gets healthy again, um, and then the two rookies because the, the rookies that's the thing. At the end of the, I know everybody's thinking about the end of the game. And everybody, oh man, the end of the game, it sucked. You had uh, Jalen Davis or Jalen Alma Davis on Tyreek Hill one on one. He just let him go right past him. Da -da -da -da. But I, it was supposed to be a safety back over top. But anyway, um, everybody is so hung up on the very end of the game, what happened with the rookies. But they had actually had some really good moments too. They had, both of them had some good moments throughout the game. Now, again, the end is what everybody remembers. Everybody remembers the worst part. 
So it can make people forget about the good. Just like we talked about with Lamar. Well, since the Ravens lost, a lot of people are like, oh, they, they, they forget about Lamar's great game because the Ravens lost. And just like with the rookies, a lot of people forget about the good plays that they made too. Even Kyle Hamilton there. Kyle Hamilton forced incompletion, I remember. But anyway, um, so it wasn't like they were all bad. And again, they're rookies. They're rookies. So the things will get better over time. So I'm changing my answer. I'm going to go with a pass rusher. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Team Keep It Clean, welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs. Um, and we always talk about how timing is everything. Uh, I'm recording this on uh, Friday, September 23rd. It's 11.10 a.m. Uh, and it just came out that Jason Pierre-Paul, who was recently signed by the Ravens, well, signed, uh, it won't be official until Monday. So, um, he will not be playing in this Patriots game. So anyway, um, that's that. Next question came from my guy, Droid209. He said, Uncle Graven, my man. He called me uncle, made me sound old, even though I am old. But anyway, um, hope the family is all gravy and all healthy. Oh, yeah, everything is great. Let's just pretend real quick. You are the Ravens defensive coordinator. Oh, me. Me. And Madden, I, I be running a lot of blitzes. But, see, you know what? Real quick, I was playing Madden last night. Madden 23 or 22, whatever Madden we on. I was playing it last night, and I was going against the Browns. It's, it's late in the week. So it, it, it's crazy because Madden, actually, the first time I faced the Browns, it was Jacoby Brissett. But then the second time I faced the, played the Browns, it was Deshaun Watson. So do they have, like, suspensions in the game? Is Madden getting realistic like that? Anyway, I don't know. Um, but I was playing Deshaun Watson. And usually every single week, um, every quarterback I go against, normally just I'm blitzing like crazy. I'm blitzing like crazy, and it works. Uh, we lead the league in sacks. We lead the league in interceptions. But it's just in a video game. I also signed a Dominican Sue. Um, I think somebody else, too. But on offense, who well, I signed a bunch of receivers. But anyway, because um, I signed Odell Beckham Jr. I signed Will Fuller. I signed, I signed Marquise Gold. Because I just I, I needed some speed. But that's beside the point. Defense. We get a lot of sacks, a lot of picks. Um, but I blitz all the time. I'm always blitzing. Every passing down, I'm always blitzing. Well, like nine times out of ten. But with the Browns, with Deshaun Watson, it was not working. It just was not working. I wasn't getting sacks. Um, we were forced some turnovers every now and then, but I, it just was not working. The blitz wasn't working like that. So what did I do? I made adjustments. I made adjustments, and I stopped blitzing as much. I, 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 I dialed it back a little bit, and we had success against the pass. He still threw a couple picks. He ended up winning the game. I think he won by like 10 or maybe 14. No, it was 14. It was a really good game. It was close, but then, uh, yeah, we made the proper adjustments and closed it out. So, anyway, just giving you a little bit of my, my, my defensive background and whatnot. Check the resume. Anyway, he said, uh, how would you coordinate the fourth quarter? Uh, the, you mean the fourth quarter of the, uh, the, the, the Dolphins game that we just watched? Oh, I mean, we make an adjustment even before the fourth quarter. Um, I'm, it's a safety up top over time, over every time. Over uh, Jalen Waddle, Tyreek Hill, I'm playing that super safe because I know about both of them dudes. I know about both of them dudes. I'm having my my cornerbacks try to press them, especially like on third downs. I'm trying. I'm having my cornerbacks try to press them. Not every down because I don't need y'all getting gas like that, especially if y'all not even healthy. But yeah, y'all y'all gonna be pressing them, especially on third down. But then if 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 Marlon Humphrey was out or if Marcus Peters was out, I right, hey safeties y'all playing deep. Because I ain't having my, my young boys get beat like that. Straight up. Anyway, uh, he said also, great move for Jason Pierre-Paul. Do you also think we have some needs for positions? Uh, if so, what are they and who would you try and get? Thank you again, Uncle Graven. Keep it clean, my brother. Appreciate it. Um, Needs for positions. Uh, I think really <laughs> the biggest need for Ravens positions uh, is health. Is health. Because like um, left tackle... Ronnie said health. Uh, at the running back position, he could get better with health. J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards. Um, who else? Uh, tight end to get even healthy and helping the run game too. 
Nick Boyle, health. Um, cornerback, secondary. I mean, we saw last week, Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peters, health. We want to up the pass rush. They just signed JPP, but Bowser and Ajabo, health. So you get my point. Next question came from T-Dog X. It says, could Tay-Tay come home? No. But anyway, let's see the question. He said, what's up, Engraven? I think it has been some time since I submitted a question. Oh, yeah, it's been a really long time, but it's all good. Uh, but here we go. So in light of the signing of JPP, I was interested as to where he would fit in on defense. So what did I do? Went to Madden, L-O-S-C. Hey, hey, I ain't, we were just talking about that. Anyway, he said, I, I saw he was not yet on the team. So I looked at the free agency list. And who did I see on there? Tavon Young. So this made me wonder, could the Ravens bring Tay-Tay back? He is from B-more and played uh, and has played when healthy. Uh, too bad he has played well when healthy. Too bad he's not always healthy. Uh, the Ravens seem to need a slot corner, and that is where Young is at best. I know it's a gamble, but I think he'll be the perfect pickup because we could get him cheap. Ooh. <laughs> you sound like Eric DaCosta. Uh, just wanted to shoot this random thought by you to see what you think. Thanks for what you do. Appreciate it. Um, no, he's on the Bears. Yeah, he's on the Bears. I think they put him on injured reserve, though. But, yeah, he's in Chicago, so he's not even a free agent. Next question came from Kogan. He said, Kenny Galladay. And he put the little eyes emoji. Anyway, he said, what's up, Engraven? I appreciate your content and analyst style. I feel like you read my mind most of the time with your takes. Oh, man, so, so you crazy, too? I thought it was just me solo. But anyway, he said, so I might be in the minority, or at least was, until they started having a chance to show out this season. But I have a lot of confidence in our receiving corps. With that said, as history has shown us, and I know you've mentioned a few times, that a team could never have too much depth. Never, ever, ever. Uh, we lose Bateman, Andrews, or even Duvernay, and things could tailspin quickly. I wonder if this would be a good chance for us to go out and make a trade for Galladay, with us forcing the Giants to eat some of that salary, of course. Yeah, they would have to eat a lot of it. Um, I feel like if, if Ravens, if they wanted to get Galladay, because I, I don't know when the earliest the Giants could really cut him um, and not have to like deal with so much of the salary cap mess. Um, but if they, I, I would say if the Ravens, especially from what we heard about him with reports and stuff, would it even be worth it for him? Uh, if, he's, if, he, if it's that rough for him over with the Giants, uh, if Ravens were to trade for him, Mm. Like the Giants would have to eat get, I say Giants take like 90% of it At least And Ravens give up like maybe like a, a fifth or sixth or seventh round pick Something like that Like I don't know man I um mm, That's He wouldn't be very high on my list If, if they were to trade for uh, See this, this is where Because I know a lot of people would like hype on Darius Slayton This is where I would actually prefer If they were to trade for somebody I would rather be him than, than Kenny Galladay um, just with everything considered. But anyway, he said, I, I think he would not only be a solid depth, but a great weapon for us. Who knows? Might even show Lamar the organization is all in on him in every possible facet. Mm, they should have been showed that. Uh, he won't admit it, at least not until a memoir in about 20 years, because he's far too professional. But we all know he sees all these other teams going out and loading up around their QBs. I also understand that at this moment, our eyes should be focused solely on building our edge rushers, which we desperately need. But I know how hard it can be for a GM, and especially EDC, to pass up on an opportunity when the stock is down on a player uh, of Galladay's skill set when available. See, his stock may be down, but his price is still way up. So I don't even think the Ravens would even be looking at no Galladay. Uh, if he was like a free agent, they didn't have to give up anything, and they could come up with his contract, then I think there would be a possibility. But the fact that he got this crazy large contract and it's been crazy low production... I don't even think they look his way. He said, anyways, I appreciate the time you take out of your days to give the flock some solid content. Uh, let your family know we appreciate the time away uh, from, from you. They sacrifice for you to do something you love or I assume you love. <laughs> we, 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 we do enjoy uh, what we do. I, I appreciate that. Uh, and connecting all of us and making your mark on the Ravens family. Hey, appreciate this, Kogan. This was a, a fun one. Appreciate you. This question came from Marcus. He said, should the Ravens bring back LJ Fort? You know what? I'm, I'm like, surprised. Because they, they apparently were talking to Blake Martinez. They, um, they obviously brought back Josh Bynes. They tried to get uh, Bobby Wagner. Um, so they obviously got questions. They, they lost Josh Ross. They, they signed the linebacker from the Jets. They signed Brandon Copeland. So they signed all these linebackers. Not all of them are inside linebackers. Some are, but... And they went for all these linebackers, but uh, what's up with LJ Ford? Like you know him, you you got the you definitely got the insight on his medical history and whatnot. But uh, so I don't know. 
Anyway, he said, um, hey, Engraven, this is Marcus. Uh, hope you and the fam are doing well. Uh, obviously, we are very thin at the pass rush position, and I was thinking, should the Ravens bring back LJ Ford? I'm not necessarily saying that he should immediately start, but somebody who can be a rotational player and can provide quality depth. What are your thoughts on hashtag team keep it clean? Appreciate it, Marcus. So, yeah, it's that that is a really good question, and I just – I wonder why. Maybe it's something that we don't know about uh, with L. I, I don't know because I just haven't heard anything about him at all. And again, with the, like you mentioned, with the Ravens having these needs at, at the linebacker position, you would think like, okay, they're just running back with Ford again. But it, is, it hasn't been anything. Next question came from my guy Caleb. Oh, and this is more like <laughs> more like a comment. He said, "Hey, Raven, I'm going to my first NFL game this Sunday: Ravens versus Patriots. And will you better not?" Lose, LOL. Also, any updates on J.K. Dobbins? No, he's practicing the same old stuff. So, but yeah, the Ravens better not lose. You don't, you don't want to go to one and two. Not, not for Caleb's first game. Next question came from my guy Joseph. He said, "Hey, they team keep it clean. Really appreciate the content. No, I appreciate you listening to it." Uh, he said, "I have been listening to you uh, for a year now and appreciate your insight. Also, love how you literally keep it clean, and I can have you on while my kids are around." <laughs> We family friendly over here, baby. So everybody is welcome. He said, anyways, my question is about John Harbaugh. Let's say the Ravens do not do as well this year and the Ravens end up firing him. Woo. That would be something that I don't even think would happen in a million years. But let's just for the sake of the conversation. Let's see. Do you think we should pursue Sean Payton? He recently said he will return next year if the right situation comes along. And yeah, we, we, we know what he meant by that. I mean, it's pretty straightforward, though, but. That, that means he just wants to be a coach again. He wants to be a coach again. He wants an opportunity again. He wants to start fresh. He like them Saints. I, I love the Saints. Thanks for everything. But I, I'm ready to go in a different direction. Um, I would not mind at all. See, the, the, thing, the, thing, the thing I think about with that is like with Sean Payton, we know this dude, offensive genius. Um, and he, I feel like he would really uh, maximize Lamar Jackson as a quarterback. Just because of the way that he operates, the way that his offenses operate, uh, and the way that he does a good job of really bringing the most uh, out of his quarterbacks. Um, but would Lamar Jackson even be here? That would be a big question. Uh, but then if you got a Sean Payton, whoever your quarterback is, whatever your situation is, uh, you, you got to feel like he would, he would get the most out of whoever it may be. I mean, you obviously would hope that it would be Lamar Jackson for sure, but we just don't know right now. But as far as just coaching overall, yeah, I, I would not mind Sean Payton at all. And the last question on this episode came from my guy, B. Blake Sr. He said, hey, my boy, so happy to finally be a part of Team Keep It Clean. As you're reading this, how's your day going? Oh, my day is going pretty good. It's going pretty good. The time is 11.23. I'm feeling good. Not sure what we're going to get into today. Um, I don't know, but today would be a nice day to take like a little adventure. Sometimes... um. I just like uh, with, with with the family, my wife and my son. So I would just like just doing random stuff, going to random places, or something like that. Just seeing random stuff and just just having fun, getting out the house because it's it's always a good time, man. Um, it's always nice to uh, to sometimes we do some of the same stuff, like go to the park or something. Go to uh, we might go to arcade, go watch a movie or something like that. Go wherever, go to a mall. Um, go go get something to eat. That's that's one of the top ones right there. Going out to eat, and that's man, it could be such a problem too because you can have food at the crib, but then you start thinking about your favorite restaurants and you're thinking about how good it is, and then uh, it, you know. Um, but anyway, that's that. So we'll see. I appreciate it though. Uh, he said, "I just watched your last vlog video on YouTube about writing our wrongs and moving forward." And my thing is. I'm always looking forward, and there's so much to say, but everyone is all over the place about these little hiccups. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's how it is, man. That's how it is. After after a win, everybody like, oh, yeah, we good. We got this. We got that. Yeah, we straight. After loss, it's like, Aah! everybody goes crazy. So it, it, it happened. He said, but you said it right. Let's get past Buffalo before we really start to panic. And also, yes, fans are not dumb. We do know our teams more than these uh, analyst gurus, and he put that in quotation. Another uh, member mentioned, and Ravens are the most talked about throughout the NFL. Uh, I'm sick of the bashing, so I look forward to every game we play. Whether we win by a point or blowout, we're going to leave it on the field and get better. Oh, well, he certainly left some plays on the field uh, this past Sunday. Um, but anyway, he said, I, I do hope Lamar and the Ravens come together with some deal because I can deal with Huntley, but not as QB1. Wow. Oh, so Let me just keep reading uh, And I don't see anyone else in the backfield As a better quarterback for the Ravens than Lamar 
uh, or Flacco. No questions. Just a rant. Keep doing your thing. I will have a few questions after this interesting Patriots matchup. Oh, appreciate that, man. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, we have more answers than questions. Uh, but yeah, like I talked about, I, I I know a lot of people have been freaking out, which is understandable. It's fine. But again, Ravens haven't even I, I, I established their identity yet. It seems as if, okay, oh, Ravens, they about to be a passing team, which I don't mind at all. Y'all know it. Um, but they they still looking for the running game, too, which they need to look for because they they, they need to hopefully find it. Um, so whether it's a, 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 the offensive line, a matter of them just blocking better, uh, whether it's a matter of J.K. Dobbins returning, whether it's a matter of Justice Hill getting more opportunity uh, and making the most of that opportunity. It's, it's important to um, when you do get your opportunity to, to be efficient with it. Um, so it's, it's a mix of mix. Ah, it's a mix of things that they need to put all together to make this thing right. Yeah, this feels like a dream.